Hello and welcome to the video where I showcase all of the new features of 5.25 and believe me, there's quite a few. I'm actually super excited about this feature. I've talked about it a lot. Just one thing, I'm really sorry if there's any weird visual uh, effects, everything going black in the video. I still haven't found out how to fix that. Anyway, the first big feature is that the overview, which you might actually uh, have seen before in other videos, is actually coming officially enabled by default. The overview is uh, very similar to the parachute effect or uh, the GNOME overview and what it does it allow, allows you to see all of the opens window in this desktop uh, but also to switch between your desktops just like this. It also allows you to actually search uh, just like if it was KRunner so anything that you can do in KRunner you can also do in the overview effect. You can create new desktops through this button, you can rename the desktop through this button and uh, uh, that's mostly it. You can also close the windows and such. So this is the overview effect. It's uh, very new actually. It's getting improved a lot. So even if now it is enabled by default, keep in mind that uh, it will still be improved in the coming versions, but it still looks pretty good as it is now. Secondly, very uh, big change too. I can't actually show you this one because it's Wayland only and I'm unable to record on Wayland, but you can now have one-to-one -one gestures on the touchpad. Again, it's Wayland only, but it works very nicely and there's a variety of things you can do. With three fingers uh, going around, you can actually switch between workspaces. With four fingers up, you can access the desktop grid. Four fingers down, you access the present windows effect, which is this one. And uh, with a pinch of four fingers, you can access the overview effect again. And all of this is one-to-one, -one, which means that if you follow your fingers uh, uh, the effect will follow your fingers that makes it feel way more natural natural and it feels very good uh, this is something that gnome uh, add already and elementary os the latest latest version add and now kd plasma has it too and it works really well right now you cannot customize it unluckily but that is a feature that will come for sure uh, in the coming versions one-to-one -one gestures are also used for touch screen one-to-one -one gestures. So if you take your finger and you have a touch screen computer, obviously, and you start swiping from the right, and this works on X11 too, not just Wayland, you can actually have an effect that follows your finger as you're swiping through it, which makes it feel much more natural. Uh, it should also work with, as you can see, the desktop grid. Now I'm going up and down, and the uh, effect is actually following my finger. Uh, this is customizable, so you can choose whatever effect to be used and this will improve significantly uh, moving around if you have a touch screen computer or a tablet just like I don't know the pine tab as an example. Another very big change is about colors. Uh, I do have this enabled but we can make it even more visible. So if we go to the colors tab we have three new very important options. The first one obvious is actually selecting the accent color directly from the wallpaper. In this case it's blue usually <laughs> it chooses uh, yellow for this wallpaper, but whatever. If we switch to a wallpaper as an example that is very green, like this one, a green effect um, accent color will be chosen for a purple wallpaper, everything will go purple and so on. I particularly like the purple of this wallpaper. You can of course still manually choose what color you should apply. And very important, if you click on edit uh, color scheme, you do get some options to actually make that accent color that is taken from the wallpaper or that you selected even more um, useful. That is, you can first of all, tint all of your windows with that color and to make you understand I'm just going to make this to the max which is probably something you shouldn't do but still to make you understand what happens this is what happens and if I switch between color scheme you can see that the color of everything changes and you can of course choose how much of uh, the accent color the windows should be tinted with let's choose something higher but more humane okay so if I switch between colors now you can see that the windows is indeed tinted with the various colors 
colors and you can choose how much it should be tinted which means that this used uh, together with from current wallpaper will make sure that the color of your windows will be tinted with the color of the background which is very similar to what windows does with mika except we, we actually do it better especially because we also tint the panel which is also transparent and has blur behind it which means that it just looks gorgeous i, I just love it and finally you can also decide to apply the accent color to the title bars and it looks like this so you, you can actually choose what your uh, title bars should be like if you don't like the grayish you can actually make it a strong color just like this one and you have so much more color freedom now and this all of this combined with the from current wallpaper thingy i think it really changes the experience a lot and if it it was me i would make this the default um, customization but uh, it's not up to me but still i'm just going to use it so i'm super happy to say this there's also another change for people using touch screens which is a pretty big one which is touch mode uh, by default it's either never enabled or always enabled but if you have like a two-in-one it will actually enable if you detach uh, the screen or you rotate the device but if your device for any reason don't really support that you can manually enable it and what it will do it will make the ui bigger in general the context menus uh, the title bar the panel you can see that the task manager as an example is now much bigger so it's much much easier to actually click on it the system tray uh, elements are now also more distant between each other so everything is easier to click and you if you're on a tablet that's like important by the way, I haven't said that, but since everything is thanks to the consistency goal of making sure that everything uh, has the same underlying code and works in the same way, the applets perfectly follow your decision of what to use with the title bar for the apps. So now it's green here as well. So that actually works out of the box, which is pretty nice. If you prefer to have the larger uh, task manager or system tray, uh, you can actually go into settings and you will have this option spacing between icons and you can actually select large if you're on touch mode large will be enforced but you can still select it manually if you prefer it another big change which is the only change in this version actually implemented by me so i'm super happy to show it is floating panels you now have this option in the panel settings which says floating panel and if you enable it enable it uh, while well, the panel is floating you can actually customize how much the panel should be floating by changing values in the plasma uh, theme that you're using and i mean it's a floating panel and it defloats when a window is maximized uh, to make sure that it always looks correct it still has a few bugs on wayland i'm really sorry about that and uh, i will try to fix them as soon as possible but still uh, especially next 11 the experience feels very nice and i i don't know use them because I, I did them, so you have to use them. Another thing, if you're into customization, is we now have in edit mode, this manage desktop and panels thingy. Okay, so what's this? So let's say that uh, as an example, you connected a monitor and you created a panel in that monitor and you customized it. Uh, that panel is actually going to live in that monitor, which means that every time you attach the monitor again, you'll go uh, you're going to see the panel. If however, for any reason that monitor gets destroyed as an example uh, this panel and desktop manage, uh, management actually shows you all of the monitors that have been connected to your computer at any time including of course the default uh, screen that you have and you are able to drag and drop elements from one monitor to another like your panel or even your uh, desktop containment which is the background and the which uh, widgets on top of it so you can just do this and swap uh, between the containments that the monitors have now ignore the fact that the my wallpaper is the wrong one that's unlikely a bug not in kd plasma mat, but in my particular config that i made because i messed up again black glitches weird wallpaper on me another uh, feature that sounds less exciting that it actually is is that now switching within global themes sorry actually makes sense <laughs> 
because uh, before this, if you switch to another global theme, everything, every customiz customization that you had was rewritten with a global theme. And it wasn't that easy to understand what the global theme was actually changing. So I never actually changed global theme because I was always so scared of losing my customization. Now, if you try to switch uh, to another global theme, you can actually choose what should be applied. Uh, as an example, you can choose to apply the desktop layout from that uh, global theme because yes, global themes do actually have a desktop li layout, so like panels and such. But you can also click on this button and choose everything that should or should not be applied. So as an example, if I want to apply Breeze, but I actually want only to apply the cursor of Breeze, well, probably I should just open cursor, but I can just select cursors or I don't know, the colors and application style, and that's it. And this actually makes it much easier to say, okay, let's switch to another um, global theme because you're going to see what's going to happen. And before this, I was actually, even as a developer, super scared of using global themes. Uh, I always had the fear of getting my customizations reverted to the defaults when I didn't want to. Then this cover has been redesigned. Uh, I'm not sure I can actually show you this. N well, surely not if this cover is not opening for me. Thank you, Discover. I seriously need to reinstall the, <laughs> my operating system. Uh, but uh, luckily I did an animation and with I, I mean, I and Manuel, because Manuel did most of the work here. So let me actually show you the animation that shows what's new. Wrong one. Okay, so this is Dolphin. And we can see that we now have these three new cards, which show links directly to the documentation website and uh, potentially add-ons of the app that you want to download. And at the bottom of the page, you have a get involved section, both to donate to the project and to report the bugs. Not only this, but not showcased in this video, you also have uh, flat pack permissions. So you are, you're actually able to see the permissions that a flat pack requires. And that should be it. Uh, it feels like I forgot something, but that should. Another couple of small things because it just doesn't end. Uh, first of all, when you get the password wrong on the login manager, the login actually shakes, similarly to what Macintosh does to show you that you got the password wrong. And you know, getting the password right is very important uh, to actually log into your system. So now the shaking actually transmits you that. The Kwin scripts, sorry, the Kwin effects for for um, present windows and the desktop grid has actually been rewritten from scratch. They're all completely new code uh, written in QML instead of C++ and that makes it makes them so much easier to maintain and also it's much easier to actually connect them to the one to one source systems. So you won't see this but now the code is much easier to maintain. In theory the panel should have been rewritten too but it was reverted last minute because because it had too many bugs. That's on me. I did the panel rewrite and it just didn't work out as I wanted. Another thing about panels is that you can now uh, set a shortcut to the panel to actually uh, focus the panel. So when you click this combination of keys, the focus is going to the panel. And by doing that, you can actually select an applet inside of the panel. So you can do uh, keyboard based navigation even for the panel. And that should be it. So, so many changes. You've got the overview, you've got one to one gestures, you've got all the color stuff, you've got the floating panel you've got the global theme changes. It's honestly, the biggest update to KD Plasma I've seen. It will probably have uh, a lot of bugs when you have such a big update with so many things rewritten from scratch. It's very natural to have some bugs, but uh, 5.26 will probably be a release with a lot of bug fixes for everything that went wrong. Uh, personally, I did see some of uh, some couple of bugs and some uh, missing features, but overall, this is like a super nice uh, release to use and I highly suggest you to try it out. To end this video, let me actually say thank you to all of the patrons that are currently supporting me even though I make uh, less videos than usual because of exams. And one thing that is very important to say is that uh, you can also donate to KDE. There's on KDE.org a link to the donation page. This that you're going to see on the left is a donation link for me specifically, which not only supports my work on KDE, which is 
just my work, but also the other projects that I have, such as this channel. So you actually get a choice between donating to me specifically that I only work on certain things on KD Plasma. So it's very personal or KD Plasma, uh, sorry, KDE as a whole that actually supports in things like organizing sprints and uh, the KDE AV helps people get to KDE Academy to give talks, this kind of things, hires uh, some developers at this point. So you can actually choose if you want to donate me something thing I'd be super happy I'm trying my best but if you also want to donate something to KDE uh, which has a whole is what did this update not me obviously then you can go to kde.org and click on the donate button and that was everything see you tomorrow with a new video except it's not going to be tomorrow because I'm because I have exams